So my story begins, sitting in stillness on the floor of my living room. I was mentally assessing that there's something wrong with my brain again. It's mid-pandemic, year 2021, and I've reached a state of maximum burnout. I failed my philosophy class again, and you're probably thinking, so what? Well, how does somebody who knows philosophy, loves philosophy, and is technically a practicing Stoic fail philosophy? <laughs> I'm tired of scapegoating my own behavior, and I wasn't going to use the pandemic as a pass. I knew that there was something wrong, and I couldn't pinpoint what it was. And I failed classes similarly like this before. But I knew things needed to be different. I needed to be different. As a nurse's assistant during the pandemic, there's, there was so much work to do. Uh, working in the ICU, I worked 16-hour shifts back to back to back, clocking in at short rest with very little sleep, working days and nights, nights and days, till honestly, I didn't know what day it was. I even worked and picked up uh, contract work as a travel nurse's assistant working at up to three different hospitals at one point. But here's where my pillars of stability collapsed. With an adequate amount of rest, high amounts of stress, and lack of routine and structure created absolute mental chaos. With, with everything that I was going through, I was feeling very overwhelmed. I didn't really know what I was going to do at this point. With that being said, I knew that I needed to focus on my mental health, and I need to focus on what was going on with me. And with isolation, I was living in an ADHD person's worst nightmare. Uh, so before I continue, I wanted to talk about what does ADHD feel like? ADHD feels like a couple things, but it feels like you're in a loud club, and people are speaking, really loud, trying to hear uh, themselves over the music. But the problem is, no one can hear. With ADHD, there's no club, except for the one in your head, preventing me from hearing you. Until you have the noise from your environment match the volume of the noise that's in your head through like music and things like that, uh, we can finally think. The second thing that I wish people knew about ADHD and task management was uh, it's like playing a game of catch. And you're, uh, per the person with ADHD is a receiver in the game of, of catch. And each ball thrown represents a completed task. The problem with this is that when you have all these tasks and requests, uh, the person with the ADHD thinks they have completed everything that they've needed to do. It isn't until at the end of the day, when you lay your head down to rest, that all the balls are on the floor, or some of the balls are on the floor. And those balls signify each, com each missed task, uh, missed requests, forgetfulness, and broken promises that can leave people around us feeling frustrated. So I decided to open up about my struggles to the friends around me, who also so happen to be nurses. My first friend said that ADHD is an imaginary illness, and it doesn't exist, so I can't be cured. He recommended me some supplements, threw out some, and that worked for a little while until my brain got fuzzy again. I confided in another friend uh, who I felt would be a good reference point, she was diagnosed with ADHD when she was very young. And I figured she would good, be a good person to kind of share my stories with. She said to me, there's no way you can have ADHD. You're too organized. You're too planned. Everything that you do is pretty much perfect. And you work in an ICU. There's no way you can have it. And I must be an answer in my life for a long time. So it wasn't until after a while I went to go see the doctor. I saw my primary care doctor. And he told me as soon as I 
suspected, you know, I think I have ADHD. He said, I can diagnose you right here, right now, and I can put you on Adderall. I was shocked. He didn't even do an intake, ask me any questions, anything like that. He didn't even think about the proper medication or even ask if I needed to see a specialist. And I decided to not see that doctor anymore. <laughs> and I knew that being in healthcare myself, a doctor does have the power to diagnose you and has the power to put you on any medication. But that doesn't mean that they should. You should always be seen by a mental health specialist, someone who specializes in that field. The second thing I, I realized with my healthcare nursing friends is that even though healthcare is adjacent to mental health, is a specialty, it doesn't mean that they would know in about that topic. And that's important to know moving forward. So I decided I wanted to do my own research through the internet. Uh, and like any other person, I wanted to find information through video. I tried to look up Instagram reels, YouTube videos, TikToks, to try to find some information to help gain understanding of ADHD itself. The internet is an untamed place. <laughs> and basically, I found a lot of misinformation there. A lot of people there on the internet that were talking about ADHD were talking about it from an undiagnosed perspective, which created a lot of problems for me. I wasn't able to find anything where I can just fully say, wow, I totally understand this topic from this person's perspective. So all I wanted to find was a video, one video of a credible person talking about this topic that they specialized in. It wasn't until I came across a video um, by Thomas E. Brown, who's a Yale professor, and he studies ADHD and attention-related disorders. His whole his video called What is ADHD changed my whole life. It covered many of the nuances that you would not find in most of these other videos. And it wasn't until he said, it wasn't until he said that uh, one of your parents is gonna have ADHD, that I took a moment of pause. It was at this moment that I realized that this was the start of a professional diagnosis, that me self-diagnosing myself, I'm going to go get further treatment. Through telehealth uh, and through a service called Cerebral, I finally got seen by a mental health professional. It was a nurse practitioner that specialized in neurology. My intake was 45 minutes long, asking me a lot of really strange questions. Before deciding on the right medication, that medication changed my whole life. And from that moment on, a whole cloud lifted, was lifted from my body. I didn't realize until I got on medication that I was depressed. And that was the difference between getting medication and medication was the difference between non-functioning and functioning. But this is my personal story with ADHD, and this is my experience. Also saying that Everyone will have their own experiences. And it's important to know that with stigmas in mental health, it's really important to see a mental health professional, not your primary care doctor. And at 31 years old, I was finally diagnosed with ADHD. And this was the moment that I was able to fully restart my life uh, and school, and don't let a stigma, uh, don't let the stigma of ADHD 
um, be a barrier um, to get a professional diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you.